So how did our cell phones end up with GPS, the internet, and so many other things that have nothing to do with making calls? One of 1989's most popular toys helped pave the way for the all-in-one mobile device. This thing is addicting. <laughs> Having a portable device that you could take with you anywhere, play on the train, play on the bus, I mean, that revolutionized gaming. We grow up and we stop playing games, we start doing other things, but the device is still there. It's just gotten way better. In 1989, computers were still loud and not exactly mobile, but they were becoming commonplace outside the office, and their days as clunky, overpriced calculators were numbered. The thing that did happen in the late 80s, of course, is the personal computer. The microprocessor was developed and packaged into a size that could be brought into the home. And while we didn't go from a Commodore 64 on our desk to an iPhone 10 in our hand overnight, the path to portability began in 1989, when we started taking a child's toy with us, wherever we went. The Game Boy itself was the first multi-use. By that, you can change games, you can do other things. Handheld, personal device that anyone had. Once the Game Boy came out, you no longer had to go home or to your friend's house to play a game. You could just play a game anywhere you wanted to play. But for Game Boy to be a game changer, it needed more than just good hardware. And video game designer Hank Rogers was about to stumble on that one thing that would turn Game Boy into a phenomenon. I traveled around the world looking for games to all the trade shows, including the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, where I found Tetris. So in 1989, as the year begins, we had just started publishing Tetris on personal computer platforms. Tetris is a game that could be played by anybody. People who don't play games are all playing this game. Game Boy came out in Japan and Nintendo was trying to figure out when and how to launch it in the US. I went to visit the president of Nintendo of America, Mr. Arakawa, and I said, Mr. Arakawa, you know, you're probably thinking to include some game with Game Boy. Tetris is the perfect game. And on a handshake, we made a deal. I mean, that revolutionized gaming. Now you can have all the power and excitement of Nintendo right in the palm of your hand. Introducing Game Boy. Game Boy, bundled with Tetris, made its U.S. debut in the summer of 1989 and was an instant smash. On Game Boy, when you're dealing with 1.5 million units in a matter of a few months, obviously you have a phenomenon starting there. It's going to be a Nintendo Christmas. Like the VCR and the Walkman before it, the Game Boy had turned an entire industry on its head. How we played games and where we played them would never be the same. You know, when you think about a desktop in 1989, You'd have a Rolodex, a typewriter, cassette recorder, telephone, stereo system, all that would sit on your desk. Now all of that fits in your pocket. The Game Boy opening up the doors to a more portable world was making things exciting and easier for everybody around. So once arcades started fitting in our pockets, other magical electronic bricks wouldn't be far off. By the early 90s, we had digital notepads and laptops. And soon, everything from cameras to stereos became must-have digital companions like the Game Boy. Until someone decided, maybe we had one too many portable gadgets. An iPod, a phone, and an internet communicator. And we are calling it iPhone. The original iPhone was a game changer for almost every industry, and it turned Apple into one of the world's most valuable companies. And it wasn't long before gaming, GPS, and of course, the internet would come standard on every mobile device. All of 1989's tech marvels bundled together forever. Miniaturization, personalization, and mobility, and connectedness are the things that we all now expect. Today, we depend on these digital companions for everything. And the irony is, we're connected to the entire world, but often, we're not paying attention to it. <laughs>
There's the picture. Uh, during the three and a half hour hearing, at one point, you were playing a little poker on your iPhone. It's just sad this, this human interaction is being depleted. It's the most connected we've ever been, but I would also argue that it's the most disconnected we've ever been.